Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. There's been a cry for help in the comments section of my latest video. Joy asks why the sun appears to disappear from the right side uh, earlier this morning and then reappears from the bottom. So she also pointed out that she expects that WSO will be making a big deal about this, and in fact, he already has in his latest video. So I'm going to address all the major points from WSO's video, but I'm going to take them out of order to first address Joy's question about why the sun disappeared vertically and then reappeared horizontally. In fact, this is exactly what is predicted by the orbital elements that we already calculated from my webcast earlier this week. So here's another video from Celestia using the orbital elements that I calculated in my last video. You can see that the sun disappeared from right to left, and now it will appear over the Antarctic from uh, bottom to top. Here's a replay of the view as seen from SDO using the Helio Viewer website. Steve likes to use the Helio Viewer website a lot as well, and his second point asks why the shadow appears concave in the far ultraviolet images. We watch the replay again. The shadow does appear to be concave as the sun goes behind the Earth. So how can that possibly be the Earth? Well, to answer this, we have to first understand that the images from the Helio Viewer website are simply the processed JPEG versions. These are not the raw FITS files. Again, and I've said this till I'm blue in the face, always go back to the original raw FITS files. Here's an image from the September 1st double eclipse in 1700 angstroms. I processed this myself in the original raw FITS file, and I deliberately did it in a manner similar to what you see on the Healy Viewer website. The images on the Healy Viewer website are heavily contrast enhanced. These are high bit depth FITS files. Most monitors can only display 8-bit images natively, and so you lose the dimmer parts of the image, and it gives the impression that the shadow is concave. But of course, that still begs the question, why does it only look concave in the far ultraviolet images? Well, when you look at the original raw FITS files, you find out that Earth's atmosphere has some unique refracting effects on the light from far ultraviolet images that does not necessarily apply to the extreme ultraviolet images. Here's the same image. I processed this image from the exact same raw FITS file, but I did it differently in PixInsight, and I enhanced the contrast enough to reveal the dimmer parts of the image that you couldn't see before. Notice how badly distorted the moon's own field is close to the Earth's terminator. Not only does the image now not look nearly as concave, but you can see the extreme refracting effects that the Earth's atmosphere is having on the light at this particular wavelength. To further illustrate this, let's take a look at the image where the sun was first starting to appear from behind the Earth at this wavelength. You can see that the sun looks badly distorted. In fact, it takes on a UFO-like shape. You can even see a hint of the moon in front of the sun in the upper part of the sun's image, even though geometrically the moon should not have been revealed yet. That is because the light from that part of the sun with the moon blocking it is being bent and refracted all the way through Earth's atmosphere to reach the imager. It's also being badly distorted so that it looks flattened like a pancake. This flattening effect becomes more severe the farther to the upper left in the image you get, and so you have this very distorted shape of the sun. Here's the next image in the sequence from the same wavelength, and the upper left portion of the sun's image is still badly flattened by this refracting effect, while the lower right portion of the image is more fully out of the atmosphere. Now here's the next image in the sequence, and now we can start to see more of the moon in front of the sun. And you can see that it takes on a shape very similar to what we saw with the sun when it was first starting to be revealed in this sequence of images. The Earth's atmosphere has distorted the moon's image, which we know should be round, to an almost UFO-like shape, just like what we saw with the sun. You would not see this in all of this detail if you only looked on the Healy Viewer website. The contrast enhancement done to those images cuts off the dimmer parts of what you're seeing here, and so you don't get to see all the effects that Earth's atmosphere is having on these images. Finally, we come back to the image that we started with, and you can see that the moon is now starting to be more fully revealed and starting to take on a more round shape, but it's still being distorted where it meets the atmosphere of the Earth. If we layer these images on top of each other, what we see is that the UFO-like shape of the sun as it's first being revealed is tip to tip the same diameter as the sun once it's fully revealed. 
What's happening here is that light from the sun is being refracted through the Earth's atmosphere, and the deeper into the Earth's atmosphere it is, the more it's refracted, resulting in an extremely squished shape, which produces this UFO-like appearance of the sun as it's first revealed. The contrast enhancement done in the Helioview website gives the false impression that it's simply a concave shadow, but the true story is that the sun's image is being badly distorted by atmospheric refraction. Now, to address the rest of his points, he starts off asking why the Earth's uh, shadow is indistinct, whereas the moon's shadow is sharp. Well, of course, that's because of the Earth's atmosphere, which is far more significant than the moon's atmosphere. The moon's atmosphere is better than the best vacuum that we can make in a laboratory on Earth, so you can regard it as a vacuum for all intents and purposes here. Therefore, the moon will have a sharp line, whereas the Earth's will be fuzzy. But on that point, also asks, why isn't the shape of the Earth's shadow consistent across the various wavelengths? He also suggests in the video that the shadow is jagged and therefore inconsistent with it being Earth, even with Earth's atmosphere. I've heard others suggest this as well, but let's remember these are images off the Helioview website that are JPEGs, not the original raw FITS files. You have to look at the original file and look at the full dynamic range to see what the story is. These images have been contrast enhanced, which can lead to strange, jagged appearances like that. Here, for example, is another image from the September 1st double eclipse that I processed myself from the original raw FITS file. And because of the contrast enhancement that I did to try to match what you see on Helioviewer, you can see that the shadow looks somewhat jagged, where it meets some of the darker areas of the sun's surface it appears to blend in with the shadow of the Earth and give the, that shadow a inconsistent, jagged appearance. If I adjust how I process that FITS file, and I'm careful not to clip the bottom of the histogram, you can see that the edge of the Earth's atmosphere is a smooth gradient, and that it's not actually jagged in appearance. It's just an artifact of the way that the Helioviewer images have been contrast enhanced. Lastly, he suggests that channels like mine are lying to you. I can only speak for myself, but I am not lying to you. I showed you guys SDO during the live webcast. We solved the orbit from those images, and now we've extrapolated that data to take a look at what's really going on, and it really just is Earth passing in front of the sun. It does this during eclipse season twice a year. Thanks for watching, folks. Clear skies.